Today we are going to be recognizing and factoring trinomial squares and differences of two squares. So this is a two-part lesson, and the first part is dealing with differences of squares. So we want to figure out how to determine whether a polynomial is a difference of two squares. So what we need to look at is when we see this, we're going to see a binomial. And a binomial just means there's two terms. There's one term here and one term here. Well, difference right here, this means subtraction. And so what we're looking for is a subtraction problem. A subtraction problem means that we only have one minus sign. One minus sign. So that's the first thing that we're going to look for. So right here, we have one subtraction sign. So that's good. The next thing we need are squares. We need differences of squares. That means we need two perfect squares. So once we have one minus sign and two perfect squares, then we know we've got a difference of two squares. Now, it doesn't matter where that minus sign is. That minus sign can be here or it could be in front of the first term. It doesn't really matter as long as there's just one minus sign. And we have two perfect squares. So let's take a look at this one. So what we can do is see if this is a perfect square. So if 4x squared is a perfect square, we could take its square root. And let's see what it is. Well, it's 2x. See, 2x times 2x makes 4x squared. And we could do the same thing with this one. 49y to the 6. So we're basically finding the two numbers that multiply to make 49, which would be 7. And y to the 6th is y to the 3rd, because we're adding up exponents when we multiply. So all you're doing is cutting out, cutting the exponent in half. So it only works if it's an even exponent. And so we've got our two numbers that we have when we when we take out those the perfect squares, and here's the way it will factor. Well, if we have a difference of two squares, what that means is the outside terms and the inside terms canceled out. So when we do the factoring, we're going to have one as a positive and one as a negative. So you can see that's what I did here. See, so if we have 2x minus 7y to the third and then 2x plus 7y to the third, the outside terms and the inside terms will be the same number, but they will cancel out because one is negative and one is positive. And we'll still have the first terms right here. That's what we get as the first term in, the, in that binomial. And then the last terms, the 7y to the third and 7y to the third make that 49y to the sixth. And it's negative because one negative and one positive. So that's what we're looking for. So let's take a look at some of the problems that we'll see. So again, all I would do is just see. Okay, we've got a binomial. Do we have one minus sign? You bet. And then just take the square roots. See, if we take the square root of that first one, it's a 1. That's a perfect square. Take the square root of 4x squared, that makes 2x. So that means that we have one minus sign, two perfect squares. It's going to factor with those two numbers, y minus 2x and a y, or I'm sorry, 1 minus 2x and 1 plus 2x. And that would be the factored form right there. You see the outside terms and inside terms are going to cancel out. You can see that here, especially this one. Negative 2x, here we have a positive 2x. You see how those end up canceling out. They're opposite signs, same numbers. That's why you don't see that term. So that's our answer. So same sort of thing on the next one here. We have one minus sign, so that's good. And then you just see if these are perfect squares. And so the square root of x to the 8th, well, that's just x to the 4th. The square root of 49 is 7. The square root of y to the 16th. Now, careful. A lot of people want to say this is 4, but it's not. You see you're adding up exponents when you multiply. So it's got to be 7y to the 8th. 7y to the 8th times 7y to the 8th makes 49y to the 16th. So since we only have the 1 minus sign, it's going to factor like this. x to the 4th minus 7y to the 8th. And we have an x to the 4th plus 7y to the 8th. And you can see how those outside terms and inside terms will cancel out. And that's why we don't see that middle term. And so if the first term is a perfect square, last term is a perfect square, and there's one minus sign, that means it's a difference of two squares. Let's take a look at the next one here. We have one minus sign again. That's good. And so we'll take a look and see if these are both perfect squares. 16, x to the 2nd is a 4x. That's a good sign. That works. Well, let's take a look at this next one. 49. 49 means we have 7. Well, 
here's the problem. This is an odd exponent. Odd exponent. That means it's not a perfect square. Not perfect. Because we can't come up with two numbers that are both integers that make up 9. Because it would be 4.5 and 4.5. But we can't have uh, exponents that are fractions or even mixed numbers when we're dealing with polynomials. So this is not a perfect square. So our answer here would be no. And the reason is 49 y to the ninth is not a perfect a perfect square and so no it won't factor and the reason is is that that y to the ninth mainly is the reason why it doesn't work out but the whole term is not a perfect is not a perfect square so i just wrote that all out well let's take a look at another one here so we have one minus sign. Again, it doesn't matter that the minus sign is here or whether it's in front of the 16 as long as there's just one. So that's good. So now let's take a look and see if we have two perfect squares. So you see how this is just x and this is just 4. So they're both perfect squares. So the way we'd write this one out, if we want to have the minus x squared, we'd have to do an x, a negative x plus 4 as one of them. And then the other one would have to be a positive x plus 4. So just a little different orientation of the numbers there. And if you wanted to switch the numbers around, put the 16 first and x squared last, that would be fine as well. Well, let's take a look at the next one. Well, here's the problem. These are both perfect squares because they're even exponents. And we've got coefficients that are perfect squares. But look at this. We have two positive numbers. Two positives. There's no negatives. It's not a difference. This is a sum. So we're not subtracting. So here, the reason why this is not going to factor, let's say no, it's not going to factor, and the reason is is that we have a sum, not a difference. So watch for that. That's one of the things that you need to look for is if it's a difference of squares, it's got to be a difference to start with. That means we have one minus sign we're looking for. Well, how about this one? We got one minus sign. That's good. So we can go ahead and see if these are both perfect squares x to the fourth, yeah, that makes x squared. Square root of 8, ooh, this is not a perfect square. So when it's, it looks, see a lot of people think square root of 8, oh, it's 4, but that's taking half of 8. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to make 8, and we just can't do it. It's an irrational number, so this is not perfect, and so that means that we do not have a perfect, we do not have a difference of squares, so no. Uh, if we'll say 8 is not a perfect square. And so that's what you're looking for on those problems. So half the directions will ask you, or half the problems will ask you to determine whether the binomial is a difference of squares. And if so, you factor it. If not, you have to explain, just as I did here. Well, the next part of this lesson will go over trinomial squares. So check out part two.